Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of Choices, Finding Your Joy. Paula Vale here, your host. I am just still in awe that, that I am so blessed to have this show to share with everyone and, and visit with all of you. I am so thrilled for my guest today. She's just absolutely fantastic. I've known her for a while now. Dr. Allison J.K. is an award-winning number one international best-selling author. In addition to being a master mind-body energy medicine practitioner for more than 20 years, a world traveler who has also been both a teacher and administrator within the international school system in Asia for 10 years. She intensively studied ancient practices that work with subtle energies and holistic health practices while there. We are going to chat a bit about the holidays today. We're going to chat a bit about her brand new book, Vibrational Upgrade. So first off, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here today. I'm so happy to be with you, Paula. It was a big yes as soon as you reached out. As busy as my schedule is, I will always make time to play with you. I love great? It. Look at her. <laughs> I love it. We just have fun together. We really do. Good and I'm love. so excited to share you with, you know, on an amazing women's network. You are just a blessing to, to have on the show today. Thank you. I would love to have you. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with, uh, please with share a bit of your background and, and what brought you to where you're at today. Oh, boy. Um, so my bachelor's was in psychology when I was like 12. I think my mom and I were out in the back swing and we had that kind of wooden swing that swings all together and it has a platform underneath and two benches and the structure is like at the top and it just all swings together. And so we were out there talking and she said to me, Allison, you should consider being a psychologist. You're really good with understanding people. And I said, it, and it made sense because she knew me so well and we had so many intimate conversations. So that's what I did. In my third semester in, I was like, hey, man, this isn't getting it. This isn't showing me why people choose what they do and how to be happy. This is about like hard wiring of the brain and industrial management, using psychology for industrial management. I mean, it just was cold and dry and hard. And so I changed majors, but I have spent ever since then asking the question, okay, so what makes human beings happy? and thriving. And so it led to, I then, my first career was in politics and it was during a political campaign season of 92, actually, when Clinton, I was on Clinton and Gore's campaign as well as other campaigns, they had asked me. To, it was really fun. It was really fun. And they had asked me in California, I was, where, I was living in San Francisco at the time. I had done a really successful primaries run in LA, managing a campaign, getting the first Latina woman elected to the California State Assembly and saving the last green space in LA. And so they were stoked and they said, okay, we're going to send you up to the Sierra Nevadas where there's a developer against uh, environmentalists so we can save the Sierra Nevadas for the general election. And my, my body went, I didn't want that stress. And so I went to the bookstore and this book popped off the shelf about meditation. So from there on in, I've been working with teachers. And then I eventually began teaching meditation. And then in my master's program in public administration and public policy, I started to um, no, I graduated. And then I went to go apply my master's to the working field and everything was either I was overqualified for or it didn't pay enough for me to pay back my student loans. So my mom's like, why don't you do, why don't you rely on your bachelor's, your English, it was ultimately English literature. So I was studying how people be happy through an art form. Yes. So I did that. And alongside that, I discovered energy medicine. Um, I got my first love of Reiki right after graduating my master's. And so all alongside teaching, I was developing the energy medicine practices and getting, getting a second training, going all the way up to master in Reiki and then get, adding in a, a Tibetan form. And I was already doing, I was doing yoga from freshman year in college, actually. Um, so I wanted, by that point, 
I was realizing I wasn't able to easily afford my rent, my organic produce, my massage a week, my inexpensive car, and pay back my student loans on a teacher's salary here in America. So a friend turned me on to the international school system, and I thought that was a way for me to combine both interests, where I could go study energy at its source. And so that's what I did. And I had clients over there too. I taught meditation in the AP Psych classroom, really changed some students' lives, turning them on to meditation, especially while they were uh, applying to colleges. I mean, these are elite kids that all ended up at basically Ivy Leagues. And so it was really stressful for them and competitive in the discovery of meditation. Some of them still, I mean, one of them ended up opening up a yoga studio after he graduated from business college uh, last year. So um, that's how I got interested is I'm also a personal trainer. I'm also a Qigong instructor and uh, I feel like I'm missing something else, but it's all about how to be happy in the body. It's not about like the old practices of the metaphysical world where it's let me pray let me, to the angels and let me do visualizations and guided meditations and just float out of my body to be happy. It's no, how do I bring that presence down awakened and thriving in the body with because there's so many studies at this point about how joy leads to yes. increased immunity, increased um, flow of energy, vital life force. We can talk about that. So the muscles aren't tight and just comfort in the body and um, more than enough energy to do everything you want to do. I mean, that's how we're designed to live. And that's the title of my second book. It's a vibrational upgrade, a conspiracy for your bliss easing humanity's evolutionary transition. So we're designed. It's a conspiracy for our bliss. Yes. And it's really well hidden, especially in America right now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what, what choices do we make to help us connect to our bliss? How, how do we upgrade? How do we, what would you tell the, the viewers today? Okay, so vibrational upgrade is the name of the system that I created from, I ended up with five different energy medicine modalities and it's the combination of everything I do. I have a PhD as a holistic life coach, that's what I forgot. So along with the, along with the energy medicine, it's also the coaching through mindfulness is some of the holistic life coaching, like I bring in some of the uh, eating and some of the exercising in, in yoga postures and vibrational tools that will support like essential oils and uh, sound healing. So it's a whole system to help move the body out of an ingrained, entrenched energy pattern mm -hmm. of tone that gets created in the body and out of that and into their un unwinding that. So bringing back their natural state of joy. So in, in that coaching, Paula, is the mindfulness um, coaching from, and it's, to answer your question directly now, it's any time you can notice that your mind is focusing on something heavy mm -hmm. that makes you feel weighed down and burdened, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Okay, so what else is possible? How does it get any better than that? It's a retraining that's more active mindfulness. It's cognitive psychology in the West. Tibetan Buddhism uses this technique. So it's like a dialogue with your own mind instead of what happens in the West a lot. So living in the East, you already know this, and I think we talked about this before, but living in a hemisphere where the entire backdrop is Buddhism and the basic premise of Buddhism is every human mind is a neurotic mind. And so here are the tools to deal with your own particular flavor. And yeah. so even though not everybody in the hemisphere is Buddhist and a lot of them are Christian, um, there's still this whole backdrop and you see the monks running around and that's a reminder that there's a sense of inner vision, inner direction to look inside, to deal with one's thoughts, to be introspective and to deal with one's minds. It doesn't exist here. We're so outward directed. My first book, What If There's Nothing Wrong, totally approaches that and talks about that in contrast to two hemispheres. So in our hemisphere, we're more directed outward and what can we be productive with? What can we produce? What's the outcome? What's the measurement, right? And it goes back to the science and how it got formed in the West. So we're not geared towards this creating, even the, so much of the work I do with individuals is to suggest that they have, and, and this is a woman's network, so it's highly applicable here, to suggest self-care to, to get a woman into yes. the the flow of ha creating that space for self nurturance and self care, mm -hmm. it's almost like uh, if they're not already in the flow, it's almost like so, some women hate that reminder because they're like, I know, I know, I know, and they can't. They, 
the way that they're living their lives in order to uh, help raise the kids and help get the income to the level that they're kind of told they need to have it at mm-hmm. to achieve certain things. The, 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 it's, it's designed to leave no space for self-care and self-nurturance. And so the, cre- the first thing is to be aware that you're not your thoughts, yeah. that you can question your thoughts, that you're not your thinking mind. Because in the act, and when I teach meditation every Monday night, and as I've been teaching it for decades now, I have a product on my website that guides, it's not a guided meditation, it instructs people through the actual act of meditation, pull off of the thoughts, come back to the breath and let the thoughts float by like a leaf on a river's current. Step out of the river of the thinking mind, go to the river bank on solid ground in your body now, filling up the belly, inhaling. I love that, I love that. And I have to ask a question because I'm very big on our thoughts. You know, happiness is a choice, I believe. And what we think is, you know, what we create. So. But yet, so what you're saying is don't let your thoughts dominate you, would you say? Yeah. That could be a piece. So, but yet, do we want to focus on what our thoughts are and where they're going? You started to nail it because your hands naturally went down to here. When I use a bat, I, I call helping so i work a lot through the chakra system living in asia and studying how they're the intersection of the mind and the body and the spirit at at these major points in our system um and even in western science too there was the proof of the endocrine glands all having a chakra at them and going down the spine where the biggest gathering of nerve plexes that had receptors to receive communication from the brain were each were at each of the chakra sites on the spine so there's been scientific proof of of the chakras and i find it the most reliable consistent tech tool that i can use to understand and help unwind a person's foundational energy patterns that they want freedom from so they can get back to their natural state of joy Mm -hmm. so opening the heart chakra is a backdoor approach to quieting the mind i find that in humanity's spiritual awakening that we're in right now the strongest tool is the heart in getting that heart open and so if we're if we're in our mind and we're listening to our thoughts and we're following along our trains of thought that's a very sharp it can be unless you've worked with it and even living in America, I remember like within the first year of coming back from the 10 in Asia, I felt like there were knives getting thrown at my head because of the sharpness of ego in people's sentences that they weren't working with their tone, they weren't working with their self-management. It was just pure ego enhancement in, in America and we were taught that. I mean, when I went to teach the westernized Chinese at the International School in Taiwan, I had to change my grading system to no longer include participation because they don't, they don't expect that. So here we're, it's, it's, we have to be independent, individual, speak out an opinion. In there, it's not valued. What's valued is harmony, group harmony. And so you walk into a room and you conduct your energy and you pull yourself back accordingly so you can fit in seamlessly with the group so but here we're taught to follow our intellect we're taught to use it to get everything that income level those cars that house that neighborhood that status that is what a lot of people unquestionably go for in order to fit in so it's like this if you back it up paula it's almost like there's this level of low Mm self-esteem that causes people to want to be included in the group think to be locked into the requirements therefore which is a certain kind of car a certain kind of home a certain kind of uh, school for your kids a certain kind of dress a certain kind of job a certain kind of look uh, on and on and on and in order to keep that you have to buy the things at that level and be a consumer and consume those types of things in order to have that comfort of fitting in when in fact, why at the same time, it's in direct contrast to being an individual. So there's this like group think that people are starting to drop out of. And part of that group think is to be outwardly focused and produce that money in order to achieve all of those things that are viewed as I need to have it in order to be approved of, which originally the source is low self-esteem. So if we did the inner work to give ourselves our own approval, and if we never got mom's approval, we never got dad's approval, 
the work I do helps to unwind that. So you no longer walk out into the world needing and requiring your boss's approval. So you don't do more than it's needed in your job or needing and requiring your wife's approval, or your husband's approval. So you don't over give in a relationship. Yes. So you're centered and grounded and you come from a sense of center. So you, don't have such a noisy mind. It all builds on each other. So the, one of the first things I'm gonna come back to again is you can question your thoughts because also, this is Humanity Spiritual Awakening Time, 2012 to 2032. It's a 20 year window of the humanity's greatest evolutionary leap ever. It, the, the subtitle of my book is Easing Humanity's Evolutionary Transition that my publisher wanted to have included because he knows my work That's and the intention exciting. behind my work. Yes. So really spiritual awakening time, it's in it's rocking people wide open. And so we're feeling more, we're feeling more negativity because other people who've done no work are having their negativity come to the surface like mm -hmm. a zit needing to peak before you can pop it or a fever needing to peak before it can break. It's the same thing. All the negativity, all the heavy, dense vibrations from the ego not being checked and from egotistical greediness and, and egotistical desires instead of the heart purity that are the higher vibrations like joy, like unconditional yeah. love, like service, yeah. like gratitude, like giving, like nurturing, like self-care, like compassion, like forgiveness. All of these higher vibrations are where we're moving to by 2032 and anything that's not that's dropping out it's no Love mistake it. it's no know. mistake that who won our election in the united states is who won it's further purging so if you're more if you're more open because of the spiritual awakening and feeling more which is an outcome of the spiritual awakening and hearing better or even increased hearing or increased um sensitivity to sound because you're opening it's also you're opening down here in the third chakra at the top of the belly so you're sensing what other people are feeling even more so if you're doing and have done your work and you're an intuitive sensitive person and you're already open and we're kind of aware of how you are and then the person next to you has never been aware of that they've always like run the track of ego and they've done no work on themselves and they're opening too and all their negativity is trickling out you bet you're feeling it yes so one of the main themes people have been coming to me for since I've been back in the States is how do I get this feeling of this gray cloud off of me? And how do another one, how do I stop absorbing so much of others' negativity? Another one, do I need to kind of toughen up if I'm a sensitive, loving, caring person so I don't get bullied? So there's what, all these- What do you say to that? What do you say to that? Because that is, you know, for the people that really are giving themselves self-love and are caring and in that mode all this anxiety out there and the negative energy that's you know spurning up what what would you say to people about what they can do with that it's a great question and i'd love to be able to talk about it because there's so many people hurting in this way uh, you see it too um so mm -hmm. yeah that's why you're asking it and, and you yourself are open and light and loving and, and so the old school way of, of going in and helping where we would always go in and help if we see somebody suffering. Nowadays, it seems to require a little more boundary drawing. So your third chakra is the one that's the top of the belly, right? Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. where when we say I have a gut sense or uh, I have a gut feeling, that's where it's actually coming from. It's the third chakra. The third chakra has the empathic machinery in it. So it senses what's going on in the environment, but the chakra's will, that's what it means from Sanskrit to English, it's a will. It needs to be in a certain level of not only attuned to the outside and not only attuned to the inside, but a balance of the two. And a lot of people whose hearts, like when I was teaching, uh, my Reiki master, I was getting regular sessions weekly. She had to close my heart chakra down because it was so, it was giving so much as a teacher in the middle school in a city classroom. And so if we tend to over give in our heart chakra, also our third chakra can tend to then be more attuned to the outside world, especially for intuitive and sensitive. So we're absorbing more of other people's energies and the gap, the, uh, the third chakra is where the digestive tract begins. So gastric upsets can, are where this occurs. And a lot of the times, any kind of anxious digestive tract uh -huh. is, is actually from absorbing other people's anxiety. So there is an element of needing to have, if you notice what I'm doing with my hands, there's an element of needing to have like a shield in a way. So mm -hmm. you're, so 
energetic hygiene, like we brush our teeth, is, is something I've engaged in every single day, multiple times a day, clearing my field and intending me to be in having that kind of shield where I'm not blocking out the outside world. I'm not pushing away. There's not resistance. It's just you have a sheath. Yeah. You're in trouble. Yeah. You're but there's an element, Paula, of what you're asking that's so important that I, it's like, why are the softer people in a way getting bullied in the, in the, the more ego driven people that are harsher and louder and more pushy seem to be dominating? Well, that's the nature of the dominant of, of the ego dominance. So that's also the nature of the thinking mind that's not been worked with dominance by the thoughts. So we're all in a process of peeling back the ego, but some people aren't gonna, one of the people I work with, uh, who, started his own energy medicine he says change or die so, so i know that when i first got back here i was working with this chiropractor and he was asking me questions and i ended up in response to what he was asking me saying some people are just going to need to spin out and hit rock bottom and i came to find out later that at the time he was saying that and asking questions to me and i was saying that to him he was going about to be divorced and an alcoholic and lose his kids and his wife because of the drinking and his business, which all of it he ultimately did. So he had to hit rock bottom. Yeah. So if we're these loving, nurturing, giving people, and we're used to being that way and we give it out freely. And then there's the greedy people in, in the ego base that haven't done, mm -hmm. they're, they're getting purged, but they're not doing anything with it except now what they know to do with it is fling it on others. Mm -hmm. We're actually enabling them as if an addict. We're actually by, by helping by going in as we always would have 10 years ago in giving and loving and nurturing, we're actually enabling them. We're giving them the unconditional love that in a way their ego is so hungry for because yes. any ego based motivation is fear based and yes. fear gets love absorbs the fear. So we're not letting them do their own work for them. We're instead doing the work for them by continuing to give and continuing to love and continuing to nurture some, somebody that just needs to learn the hard way. And when we love somebody, when we have an open heart that cares about humanity, we don't like to see people suffering. But that's us putting our agenda on somebody else in a way. Yeah. So the bottom line is, I had a woman on, I'll never forget this, a woman on one of my monthly free calls asked me, do I just need to toughen up? And in a way, yeah. So mm -hmm. this shielding is yeah. one of the ways one to of the ways. not going in. So this is Qigong move I teach. It's called the pushing and pulling of the waves. So you step forward. Okay. And then you drop your hands and you pull the front foot back. So you awesome. step back. And then you step forward. And then when the elbows are still slightly bent, uh -huh. you the wrists and you pull back. So it's called the pushing and pulling of the waves, stepping back. I love it. It's the biggest teacher of the philosophy for me of how energy moves. I, I love Qigong because it teaches the oh. basic laws of how energy moves. Yoga does something oh, different. I love it. I love it. So you step out and you meet. Uh-huh. But then another natural energy flow is you pull back. Yes. So when we I feel like we're pushing, pull back. Oh, I love it. Something I, I personally do every day is, you know, being a Reiki practitioner, teacher, I activate my Reiki and I envision putting myself in just this beautiful Reiki bubble that just, it consumes my entire aura. And I just feel like that, you know, that is such a protective, loving bubble I carry with me. And I really see that as something that, that helps in that way. That's what I put out there. So would you say that's similar? Yeah, I can feel it, Paula. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's an element too. In, in, I think old school teaching taught us to, to protect. Mm -hmm. right? So there were, uh, I could go so many places, but I will say just this. We are battle focused in America. So the battle against drugs, the battle against cancer, the bat, and, mm -hmm. and, and that just sets up something to resist against. So pull back out of the battle. And so if we don't say, and you said before, our thoughts create our reality. And absolutely. I mean, we're just these projectors. And my whole first book explains this. What if there's nothing wrong? And so does the second book, much more briefly. The, we're like these projectors on top of this neck. 
in creating everything, almost everything, because I do believe in karma, and I do believe in seeming randomness. I don't believe that because somebody comes into our field and, 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 and is hurtful, that we necessarily have issues we need to work on only, that we need to resolve and it's our work and what is it in us that called this mean person into our field. I, I, I think that's overly simplified and I think that that's not fair and I think it makes the soft people continue to make themselves bad and wrong. I think that there is some randomness in there, is, especially now in that I'm saying this because the idea of fighting, if in the idea of protection, we don't even need that anymore because if I'm protecting, I'm protecting against something and I am setting up some element of my reality, not everything, like I was just saying, but we do create the majority. If our thoughts, so when we're happy, we're much higher in energy. Yes. When, we're, when we're depressed or sad, we're still lethargic and much less mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. Those are different frequencies and they're different vibrations, therefore. Yeah. So we send those out, we broadcast them. I mean, when you're giving Reiki attunements, we're getting these antennas that we all have more finely tuned to pull, you know, high light, high energy. Hi. Oh. Nothing I, like it. It's, I love it. Yeah. So, so we're emitting these. And, and, and so, yeah. yes, things come to us based on what we're emitting. So if we're emitting, I need to protect against and push against, then stuff to protect against and push against is going to come to us. But if we do it along the lines of what you just said, I just have this beautiful emanation. The yes. emanation is an upliftment and it's an entrainment that people around us can upgrade to. I feel it. Yes. Yes. I love that. Upgrade to. I love that. That's part of what's going on. I mean, I think yes. that's part of why you have a show. I think that's part of why I'm doing the work I'm doing is we're helping. Yes. I call it a vibrational upgrade. That's what we're doing on planet Earth right yes. now. Oh, I love so it. So another answer to your question, you said, so how can we maintain joy through the holiday season is to have the biggest perspective possible, to pull back, go to the mountaintop. My picture on my first book, What If There's Nothing Wrong, is a woman on a mountain. So this, and I know that the reconditioning and the reconditioning I'm constantly taking my clients through is, okay, I know you see it this way, but what if, and I'm pulling them back, mm -hmm. I'm pulling them back and I'm pulling them back because the soul talks in code. It doesn't talk in English or Spanish. It talks in metaphor. And I studied English literature. I studied symbolism. It's, it's, it's helpful, but it, it, it's, it really is a beautiful language. And so if there's a skin reaction, what is it my soul is saying that it needs? So skin is our protector. Skin is our interactor with the outside world. I feel comfortable in my own skin. There's always a bigger perspective than just, let me focus on this physical thing and let me patch it. Yes. There is this eternal source of life that is animating everything in us. And when people die, this, the, I, it's been documented. I did a radio show with Raymond Moody, who's considered the world's um, authority on the death process. And so he, would, he went around the world and he heard people's accounts of gray mist being seen leaving the body. And then he talked, his, the latest book he had done was going around the world and talking with people who were with someone during the dying process and holding their hand. The, in actually going up and seeing the tunnel of light with their loved one as their loved one was crossing over and then they come back to their body in the hospital room. So they were reports of this around the world that he documented. So there was this, and then when I was teaching, I was asking, I used to give extra credit to my kids um, when I wanted to find something out. And so we were talking about reincarnation, I think in the romanticist unit in English lit, or it was during psych class, I don't remember. But I was asking, okay, so if there's reincarnation, because I was in the East, right? They, there's no question, reincarnation happens. Yes. Um, I wanted to understand, so if this gray mist, if this animating force leaves the body, where does it go? And then how does it get back into a new body? at such a small size like how do i have past life recall and so they did their research and they did their research and they brought it all in and they all got extra credit and and so i i cycled through them for a weekend and i came to understand what my intuition guided me to is that there's cellular memory so in that gray mist is all and then it is the memory and then when we're in a new as a new embryo, one strand of DNA contains that cellular memory and then it proliferates as we grow into a fetus and embryo. That's a freebie, you guys, because I worked hard what? at understanding. <laughs> that is so awesome. Isn't that fascinating? Oh, I love it. Oh my gosh. I'm afraid we have just about run out of time. Oh my gosh, I could chat with you for hours. This is so fantastic. 
We're done. Before uh, we go, will you share with the viewers how they can uh, get your new book or contact you to work with you? Yeah. Um, right now, my publisher just started a new special today, actually. is called. So if you go to vibrationalupgradethebook.com, there's a bonus with John Asaraf. He has a bonus uh, video and some other stuff for you, as well as bonuses for me. You're going to get a free, that third chakra I was talking about, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you're going to get that $50 product of clearings and activations for the third chakra for free. Um, so that's, if you go, it just started today. So if you go to... Okay. Let me just check, double check the um, the URL, vibrationalupgradethebook.com. And so the name of the book is Vibrational Upgrade, A Conspiracy for Your Bliss. You can get it on Amazon without the bonuses if you want. Okay. Um, and so to get to my website, it's my name.com. So A-L-I-S-O-N, Allison, J-K-A-Y.com. There's a free on the top right of the screen, there's a free newsletter subscription. So you can come in and join. It's fun. You get a free 30 minute um, MP3 of clearing your blocks to success and activations for success. That's potent. I mean, the work I do is just, I'm continuing to do it because it's helping so many people. It works. You have people around the globe. You are just so amazing. I am just so honored to have you on the show today. You're so amazing too. I, I, I play with you anytime, Ms. Paula. Thank you. This is so great. Oh, I enjoyed the chat. Oh. A big thank you, Dr. Allison, and a big thank you to our viewers out there. So happy you were with us today, and happy holidays. Oh, love, hugs, and blessings to everyone. Dr. Allison, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paula.